Shalom, Yasha, Shalom, Shalom. Call Lord Yahweh. By Shema Mashiach, Kuma Laki Avashai. Wava Kakadash. Atazwan Kabal Kabayim, Eskwayim Wa. Kum Yasha Allah, Ahabatam Akim, Wa Akwa. Amen. We back at it with another video through the spirit and power of, power of Yahweh. By Shema Mashiach, Kuma Laki Avashai. Man, this is Cyrac 22. Um, This chapter about to cut a lot of people, man. You know, in general. Men and women. So, let's get into it. It says, a slothful man is compared to a filthy stone, and everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace, right? So, remember, right, we are stones on the spiritual level building up the temple of the Lord, right? Because that's why it's so important that we focus on, you know, uh, our character in these last days, right? Right. That's why we go over, you know, video series like this to where as though... <coughs> We can talk about um, a video series like this to where, you, to where so we can talk about how to become better people, right? And, you know, being your better self because you are a part of the temple of the Lord, right? Right. And if you're slothful, you're filthy, meaning if you just cannot get nothing done, right? Or you're stuck, you, you know, you just stuck being lazy, right? You know what I'm saying? Let's get the, the actual definition of slothful and we're going to go off the definition see that it just says lazy right being slothful is being lazy you just you just lazy okay all right let's get the definition of lazy it says unwilling to work or use energy, right? So you're being slothful. You're just unwilling to work or to use your energy, right? Meaning you're unwilling just to get something done, right? Everybody, every time something needs to be done, somebody has to ask you, ask you, right? Or every time <coughs> something needs to be taken care of, you're just unwilling to do it, right? And that's the actual definition of, of lazy, right? You might get it done. But you're still being, you, you might get it done, but that don't mean you're not being lazy, right? Lazy is to be unwillingly to work or to use energy, man. And that's what slothfulness is, right? You're a filthy stone, right? Let's read on. Oh, it says, and everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace because a lazy man or a lazy woman, nobody likes it, right? A lazy man and a lazy woman, it's annoying. A lazy man and a lazy woman, it's in the way, right? Right, it don't help. Right, it's not strong. It's not that strong and shiny stone that's really helping up the temple of the Lord. It says a slothful man is compared to the filth of a dunghill. Right, it says every man that takes it up will shake his hit hand. So you're a lazy man. You're a lazy woman. You're compared to a pile of shit. Right, that's uh, that, that's thus say of the Lord. Right, you're nothing but a piece of boo boo. Right, that's thus say of the Lord. Literally nothing but a piece of so if you if you're a, a lazy man, a lazy woman, the Lord looks at you as a piece of crap. Every man that takes it up will shake his hand. It says, An evil nurtured man is a dishonor of his father that begot him, and a foolish daughter is born to his loss. A evil nurtured man, he's not he's gonna be unwillingly to do anything, all right? He's going to be unwillingly to do anything to actually put any type of work in. And his father, meaning like his father might be a man of renown, or his father might be a man of a stature that's above his son, obviously. And then he look at his son like, you know, do something, right? It's like you kind of bring something forth. You bring a seed forth and you wait for it to do something. It don't do nothing, right? And it says, and a foolish daughter <laughs> is born to his loss. Meaning, hey, at the end of the day, that that woman that's foolish, she she ain't gonna bring forth nothing to you. You understand that at the end of the day, it's just for your loss. A wise daughter shall bring an inheritance to her husband, but she that liveth dishonestly is her father's heaviness. Right? Let's see what that means by an inheritance to her husband. Right? Let's see what that really means. <laughs> right. Let's get Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. This is the creation of womankind. You understand that? This is the creation of a righteous woman, if you will. Right? After the after the image of the Most High God. This is the, this is the creation of a righteous woman in the eyes of the Most High God. 
right, and help meet for the man. So if you can't help, if you're unwilling to put in that work to help your to help your husband, you're a piece of you're looked at as a piece of crap in the eyes of the Lord, right? You're looked at as a piece of nothing in the eyes of the Lord, right? This is Sirach chapter. Let's go back to it. Sirach chapter twenty-two. It says, right, and an inheritance is something that has substance, right? It says, but she that liveth dishonestly is her father is her father's heaviness. She that is bold. It says, she that is bold dishonoreth both her father and her husband, but they both shall despise her, right? A tale out of season is as music in mourning, but stripes and correction of wisdom are never out of time. Hey, this is this is Cyrak telling you, listen, he, he, he about to get in certain men behind, man. You understand that? He about to get in certain men behind. Meaning like, look, he basically saying, listen. Hey, if I were to say this out of time, you know, that's just out of time. Ain't nobody going to want to hear that. But at the end of the day, hey, stripes and, you know, wise correction, you know, you can listen to this wisdom I'm about to tell you. Hey, it's, it's never out of time, right? The words that he about to tell you, how he about to reprove and correct everybody, man. This is everybody, right? Everybody has times when they're slothful. Everybody has time when they're lazy. Everybody does, man. You understand that? Hey, but the times that you can come to to realize, that, you know, this strikes a... a, a, a Words of correction or, or or stripes. You understand that? It's never out of time. It's never out of time to write to watch a breakdown video, right? To keep your mind fixated on right things. It's never out of time to you know to, you know to meditate on the word to actually open it up and read a couple chapters. You know what I'm saying? Even if you're skimming, right? Hey, in the world, it's common. You know what I'm saying? You might eat. You got your fork in your right hand and you got your phone in your left hand. You know what I'm saying? You might be uh watching a YouTube video, right? You you got you eating with your phone in your hand to watch a video. Right, you can be eating with your phone in the hand or to, to 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 read. You understand that? So these things are never out of time. It says, "Whoso teacheth a fool is as one that uh glueth a pot shirt together." Uh, let me get a precept real quick. Uh, about that, about that, what I just read. Right, how it's never out of season. Right, in verse six, let's get a precept for that. <laughs> I want to get this precept in First Kings, two. It says, now the days of David drew nigh that he should die, and he charged Solomon, his son, saying, I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and shew thyself a man, and keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. That the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, if thy children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, there shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the a man on the throne of Israel. Right. So when you keep in the law, statutes and commandments, that's how you show yourself a man. That's how you show yourself a grown woman, right? A grown woman is going to look well to the goings of her household and actually, you know, do things as meat, right? Right? Not be lazy, not be slothful, not sit around all day, right? Get Actually get things done. Your husband asks you to do something, boom, go ahead and do it, right? Even the things that you do without him even asking you, right? That's a favor, right? The thing that you can just genuinely enjoy, right? As a household, right? That's how things are ran. And Solomon, he had a, he had, he had big, big, Man, huge shoes to fill, right? And I think we can all agree that Solomon actually filled those shoes, right, of King David, right? And all he told him to do was to keep the charge of the Lord and to walk in his ways, right? You literally have a model to look after. Just, just you know, just do it, man, right? Solomon can't say, nah, I don't feel like it. Sit at home and play video games, right? Solomon, say, Solomon can't say, nah, I would rather, you know, just do what I want to do, man, right? But let's go back to the book of Sirach, chapter 22, and verse number 7. Whoso teacheth a fool is as one that glueth a pot shirt together, and as he that waketh one from a sound sleep, right? Now, let's look at what a pot shirt is, because you can learn something from this, right? A pot shirt, right? So if you're teaching a fool, it's like you're trying to glue a pot shirt together. Now, when you have materials like this, Right, I'm, everybody knows this. You have materials like this. You're trying to glue it together. It'll never go back to its exact, you know, one whole piece or one perfect piece. It's never gonna go like that. No matter how 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 you try, what kind of technology, 
it's always going to have some type of bump, crevice. You know what I'm saying? It's never going to go back to being one whole piece. Right? Because uh, um, at the end of the day, these pot shirts, these are corroded, you know what I'm saying, pieces of uh, vessels that are broken apart. Right? You see that? That's a spirit that looked like Hebrew. I don't know what that is. Right? But if you're trying to glue this together, it won't get back. So guess what? You might actually glue it together, but it's still not going to be whole. Let's go to Revelation, the 11th chapter. You might glue it together, but it's still not going to be whole, right? This is Revelation chapter 11 and verse um, uh, number one. It says, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, arise and measure the temple of God and the altar. And then that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 and two months. You understand that? So guess what? Them that worship therein, right? Men in the truth. Men in the truth that actually do the work. You understand that? Men in the truth that's actually doing the work. Or even when Yahweh come back on earth to look to uh, get fruit from certain men's trees or certain women's trees. You understand that? Hey, guess what? You're going to get overlooked, right? Because you're a vessel it might be glued together or that brother that you're trying to teach, right? That brother or that sister that you're trying to teach, you know, it might be glued together, but you didn't actually analyze this to see like if it's actually meat. Here it is. You got a brother or you got a sister doped up on straight heroin, right? His forehead is touching his ankles, but his butt is in the air and you trying to break down the curses. Come on, brother. That's not how this thing goes, man. Right, that's you trying to you that's you trying to just heal something that's just too broke, man. It's too broke, right? You gotta use wisdom, you know, you know, when you really getting into this teaching thing. Let's uh read on. It says, um uh, uh right, it says in verse seven, it also says, and as he that waketh one from a sound sleep, right? In verse eight, he that telleth a tale to a fool. Speaking to one in a slumber, when he had told his tale, he would say, "What's the matter, right?" Because you might you might tell a, a story or, or a situation to a brother or a sister, and this is actually going to be a way you can tell a brother or sister has no wisdom, knowledge, or understanding, right? You tell it to them, and they say, "Well, well, I don't really see nothing wrong. What was going on? You understand that? Oh, I, I don't see no sin. Ain't nothing wrong with that. All right? Hey, you might I tell a tale. Hey, a tale can be a story. A tale can be a matter." Right, you tell a tale to a brother. Hey, it's not wise to teach with your uh with your damn pants sagging. Oh, uh, what's the matter? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't no right. It says he that tell a tale to a fool speak as to one in slumber. Right, just like you talking to somebody that's asleep. Right, they sitting here snoring and you sitting there just, you know, um, you know X Y Z. You know, you know I don't think this is this is just right. And they they sitting there sleep. It goes in way. It don't even go in one ear. It just go out both ears. It never even went in, right? They say in one ear and out the other. It didn't even go in. It stayed out, right? Verse uh, what's this? Verse number nine. If children live honestly, and have uh wherewithal, they shall cover the baseness. Oh wait, matter of fact, let, let me get a precept. Uh, let me get a precept. Uh, let me see if I can get this. All right, let me see if I can get this in the book of Ezra. Um, most I will, and I can get this preset real quick. That just popped up in my head. In the book of uh, uh, I spelled it wrong. Oh, let me let me look one more time. Right, because in the book of Ezra, you had valiant, uh, mighty men that was actually sent out to do the work. Right, it wasn't just regular, regular guys uh, that couldn't really do the work. Uh, so like, yeah, I forgot which chapter it was in. I think it was. So like yeah, I really want to get this.
Okay, all right, so like, yeah, but during the time of Ezra, right, they had a decree to go build the temple. Certain men were set up in certain offices, and those men that was really working on the temple with the swords in their hand, those were the mighty men. Most high willing, actually, when I finish this video, I'm going to find that precept, and I'm going to put it in the, in the description. Most high willing, right? I really want that precept. Uh, but uh, let's go on. Let's read on in verse, uh, so like, yeah, I missed my point. Uh, in verse number... Nine. If children live honestly and have wherewithal, they shall cover the baseness of their parents. Right. If you live honestly and doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you have wise parents, you know, because you know, in this captivity, our parents don't really have that much wisdom, right? Our parents are married to Edomites and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so like all kinds of stuff, right? Let's read on. It says, "But children, being haughty through disdain and want of nurture, do stain the nobility of their kindred." Right. Because remember. You know, you might have a kid. If your kid is bad, that's going to fall back on the parents, man. Everybody going to be like, oh, X, Y, Z, his kid's bad as I don't know what. Her kid's bad as I don't know what. It's going to say her kids, his kids. That's how it's going to go. Right? So how you raising up your children at home is very important as well. It says, um, weep for the dead, for he have lost the light. And weep for the fool, for he wanteth understanding. Make little weeping for the dead, for he is at rest. But the life of the fool is worse than death, man. Right? Because if you're dead, at least, you know, your judgment is already set. You kind of, you know, you already went to the, you know, you went to the most high. You didn't sent your spirit back on, you know, whatever. Right? But a fool, you just kind of can't help yourself. But at the end of the day, you got to weep for that brother and weep for that sister. Meaning you still got to pray for that brother and sister. Right? You still got to actually try to help them out, man. Because at the end of the day, it's not funny. It's not funny being a slothful, can't get nothing done, man or woman. Right, nobody wants to be around you. Right, you don't have no understanding. What 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 good are you for the benefit of us actually getting us out of captivity? What good are you for the household? Right, if you just can't get nothing done. Right, so you actually want to weep and actually try to help and pray for those people. Verse twelve: Seven days do men mourn for him that is dead, but for a fool and an ungodly man, all the days of his life. Talk not much with a fool, right, and go not to him that hath no understanding. Beware of him, lest thou have trouble, and thou shalt never be defiled with his fooleries. Depart from him, and thou shalt find rest, and never be disquitted with madness. Right, because at the end of the day, a fool, right? You you gotta you gotta you gotta avoid it. Some men in this truth are fools, right? You you just don't understand when you 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 just don't understand certain things, man. Right. You want to have debates and conversations that's out of season. You're always running into the same problems. You don't receive no counsel. You understand that? A fool, you don't want to talk much with a fool because it's going to vex your spirit, man. You understand that? It's going to vex your spirit when you're talking much with a fool. Right. And it also says, and thou shall be uh, defiled with his fooleries. Right. He's going to be defiled with his fooleries. Right. Meaning when he's talking, he's trying to get you to understand something, right? Or whatever it may be, man. Those fooleries are, are, are guile and deceit, right? It's guile and deceit. It says, what is heavier than lead? And what is the name thereof but a fool? Sand and salt and massive iron is easier to bear than a man without understanding, right? Because you, you got you, you to gotta tell that man to do everything, man. You got to tell that man to do everything. You kind of can't expect what to get from another human being, right? Because your brain is supposed to work right, individually, but you got another brother or another sister. You got to carry everything that they damn do, right? Tell them to do this. Tell them to do that. And if you don't tell them to a T, they can't get it done, right? It says sand and salt and massive iron is easier to bear than a man without understanding, right? You don't have any understanding of what it means to not be slothful. You don't have any understanding of what it means to be productive and get stuff done, right? So I'd rather carry, if you ever, if you haven't had a sack of sand, right? Those things are heavy, bro. Those things are actually heavy. Or you got them bags of salt when it's wintertime and it's snowing. I'd rather carry, break my back and carry those things than to walk around with a man or a woman without understanding, man, bro. It says, as timber girt and bound together in a building cannot be loosed with shaking. So the heart that is established by a devised counsel uh, shall fear at no time. Let's read that again. A timber girt and bound to so like a timber girt and bound together in a in a uh, building 
cannot be loosed with shaking. So the heart that is established by advised counsel shall fear at no time. All right. And so, hey, when you receive some counsel, you better take that thing wisely, man. All right. And hold on to it. All right. And it shouldn't it shouldn't be able to just break like that. It says a heart settled upon a thought of understanding is as a fair uh, a plastering. Right. It says plastering. On the wall of a gallery, right? A flying plastering on the wall of a gallery, right? You know what plaster is? You kind of mount your wall on the TV. You got the you got the holes in there, or you got your curtain rods on the wall. You understand that? You put your holes in the wall, right? And you put that plaster over it, kind of smooth it over. You can't even tell there's nothing there. You understand that? Hey, that's how it is with a man with his mind sealed. You understand that? Um, it says, uh, man, let's get that, uh. Let's get that preset in First Timothy 4 and 2. It says, uh, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time shall some depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy. This is the point. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. All right? So there's a such thing as having your conscience seared with a hot iron. And really, when you really get into it, this is this is the mindset of fools. This is the mindset of reprobate minds. Their conscience is their conscience is men with no understanding, like we read, right? Your conscience is seared with a hot iron. You understand that? They have no way to go. They don't understand it because they just they just don't have it, right? If it's got to be in you, not on you. If you don't, if they don't got it in them, they they just don't know what's going on, right? The point was is having their conscience seared. Right, that's how a man is having your mind settled. All right, it says, Pales set on high place will never stand against the wind. So, a fearful heart and the imagination of a fool cannot stand against any fear. Oh, that was my let's read that again. It says, Pales set on a high place will never stand against the wind. So, a fearful heart and the imagination of a fool cannot stand against any fear, man. Because that same fool that we're talking about in this same chapter that has no understanding, he can't get nothing done, right? It's that's like that's like boom. That's like if you set a, a piece of grass outside on your on your patio on a windy day, right? As soon as a, a ounce of <laughs> hit that grass, it's out of there, man. Right? So it says, so a fearful heart and the imagination of a fool cannot stand against any fear. He that pricketh the eye will make tears to fall, and he that pricketh the heart maketh it to shew their shew her knowledge. Whoso casteth a stone at the birds frayeth them away, and he that abradeth his friend breaketh the friendship. Right. So at the end of the day, if your actions lead toward negativity, your actions lead toward destruction. You understand that? At the end of the day, you're in control of it. Right. It's gonna end up going that way. Right. Right, if you put if you put your finger in your damn eye, it's gonna go that way, right? So in order to get the, cause remember we supposed remember we're supposed to be uh weeping right. For men out in these in any situations that we talk about, right? They got they got no faith. You understand that they got no faith, right? Their their conscience is sealed with falsehood, right? They're slothful, all of these things, right? So the point is, uh, I'm gonna read that one more time. The point is. Hey, your actions on how to get these things away, you got to get up and do something, man. You have to get up and do something to get that slothful, no understanding, idiot spirit off of you. You have to take action, right? You have to take action. It's only but so much somebody else can do to help you out. Matthew 5 and 30. And if their right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee, it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not thy whole body, but so like not that whole body, uh, be cast into hell. Because you're gonna go into hell living in that uh, uh, uh slothful damn uh, uh 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 lifestyle, right? So you have to cast off your members. And a lot of men and a lot of women don't want to cast off their members because they're so pleasurable, right? And if you can't examine that through the spirit, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't know what's going to help you. Nobody knows what's going to help you. That's why, that's why, that's exactly why I'd rather carry 
a ton of a uh, literally a ton, right? The, the 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 weight measurement of a ton of sand on my damn shoulders than to walk around with a man or a woman with no understanding, man. If you can't examine that to see that, okay, boom, you have to get up and to do something. It takes your actions. Cut your right hand off. You I mean you have to examine yourself to cut your right hand off. If you can't do that, man, it, hey, man. Let's read on. It says, um, it says, if thou hast opened thy mouth against thy friend, fear not, for they may be a, a reconciliation, except for a braiding, right? Or pride, or disclosed of secrets, or a treacherous wound. For these things, every friend will depart. Okay, boom. If you open your mouth against your friend, or if you say something that may be offensive, right? Don't fear because they can just say something back and keep it pushing. Except they've been keeping something in their heart, right? It's been something they haven't been talking about. A secret counsel, right? Something they just been they just been kind of keeping it in. They don't want to say nothing about it. And then you say something about it, that's gonna trigger somebody, right? That's what's gonna allow them to do what? For to depart. Right? Let's read that again. If thou hast opened thy mouth against thy friend, fear not. For there may be a reconciliation. Reconciliation meaning what? I mean, okay, boom, they can just go ahead and say something back, right? Okay, boom, they can just go ahead and you know, joke back, right? You know, say whatever back. Open their mouth against you back, and then it's fine. Right, except for upbraiding. Right, let's 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 Google that. Upbraiding. Right, that's a, that's a little weird word. Let's get that. Let's get that definition. All right, upbraiding is a during or present uh participle upbraiding. Find fault with someone. Scold. Right to scold. Right to scold is to really like getting somebody behind. Right, meaning like you're you're severely rebuking somebody. To school is to have a severe rebuke, right? So unless there unless you find a fault within somebody, right? Uh, Slackier. Slackier. Unless you find a fault with somebody, right? That's when that's that's what's gonna end up you scolding somebody, having a sharp rebuke, right? Verse number twenty three. It says, Be faithful to thy neighbor in his poverty. That thou mayest rejoice in his prosperity. Abide steadfast unto him in the time of his trouble. That thou mayest be higher with him in his heritage. For a mean estate is not always to be condemned, uh, contempt, nor the rich that is foolish to be had in admiration. As the vapor and smoke of a furnace goeth before the fire, so revealing before, so like it, so revealing before blood. I will not be ashamed to defend a friend, neither will I hide myself from him. And if any, right, and remember, early in this chapter, right, you're not ashamed to defend a friend or hide yourself from an actual friend. Because remember, in this chapter, hey, Sirach already told you at the end of the day, where is that? At the end of the day, man, right, these, this, this, this the correction, right, and this wisdom that Sirach is going to teach you is never out of time. Right, so a friend is actually going to be able to take heed of certain things when lessons are coming out. Elsewise, that's not a real friend, right? Because Sarek just said these things are never out of time, right? It's never a time I just don't feel like hearing correction, hearing wisdom. Never a time I don't feel like hearing wisdom, right? And that's thus saith the Lord. So, right, so if you can't get down with that, right, it's on your own. It's on your own agenda. It's on your own account, right? This is why the Lord said, "I will not be ashamed to defend a friend." Neither will I hide myself from him in the context of this chapter. And if any evil happen unto me by him, everyone that heareth it will be aware of him. Who shall set a watch before my mouth and a seal of wisdom upon my lips, that I fall not suddenly by them, and that my tongue destroy me not, man. You understand that? And who's going to do that but the Most High God? Right? Who's going to help you do that but the Most High God to help you watch what you say? Right, help you actually get up out of that bed and get stuff done. Right, help you actually understand how to be, how to uh, listen to wise counsel, listen to wisdom when it comes about. You understand that? How to teach people, how to not talk to fools. Right, when to really, when we went into this, right, talking not much with a fool and all of that, let's get this classic preset, man. Because at the end of the day, the, the scriptures got to be applied, but this is Titus uh, 3 and 10. <laughs> It says, it says, a man, so lucky, right? So, 
It says, uh, the what? If you said broken thought. Anyways, it says, a man that is an heretic after first and second admonition reject. Right, and I want to pull up some of the definitions in this uh, right here, right? A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Let's get a definition of a heretic. Right, it says a person believing or practicing religious heresy, a person holding an opinion at odds with uh, what's like it with what is generally accepted, meaning what a person that wants to continue to live or to abide in whatever kind of their own counsel is a heretic, right? If it's not braced off of the precepts and they still want to hold on to that, you will be an heretic, right? After the first and second admonition, leave them alone. Because that's not the spirit of the Lord. That's not the spirit of the Lord. You do not have the spirit on you, right? If you can't come to a, a, real, a realization that whatever thought or whatever action, right, or whatever you're doing to have that slothful demon or whatever you're doing to have you uh, uh, lacking understanding, right, you got to understand that's a spirit on you that's not allowing you to accept and to apply the precepts. That's when a heretic is. Verse 11, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth, being condemned of his self because you're condemning yourself because you're trying to justify yourself. But your inward man is going to know that you're not justified, especially when you're having a conversation about the precepts, especially when it comes to being slothful, being lazy and being slothful. is not even a characteristic that's accepted in the world, man. You understand that? So it's time to get off your damn ass. Stop being slothful so you can actually get some understanding to get that slothful demon off of you, man. All right. And with that, Shalom, Allah.